Okay, here's a, a new brush I'm making, just on a thousand by a thousand pixels. I'm going to experiment with a brush. I'm going to make it really kind of heavy on this side and lighter on this side. And one way I can do that is I can switch from painting with black on white to painting with white. And kind of opening up the brush a little bit on this side. Just for good measure, I'll do a few little spurts and dots over here. Okay, so now I have my brush. How do I save it? in a way that I can use it again without logging in into an account in Photopea, which I don't tend to do. I go to Edit, I go to Define New, and I say Brush, and then there it is, it's added, but then I'm also going to save it as a PSD file with the name, you know, my custom brush, to the desktop. Then I'm going to move that file. See, let's find it, there it is. And I'm going to move it into my assignment folder along with my PSD here that I'm using in Photop. So at any time as I close and reopen Photop, I can always use this brush. Now remember the shape of the brush is one thing but it's the the settings for it that matter the most. So I can make that brush smaller but I want to really understand how it's working. And so for that, I need to do brush settings. And those are right here, or you can find them under Window Brush. So first is Tip Dynamics. I'm going to play with the size jitter and make the control based on pin pressure. Already that's going to make it a lot more organic looking. Next, I'm going to play with angle. That's really important to me. Around 20%, size it around 20. Roundness, I'm going to put quite a bit higher in the 90s so that it has quite a bit of directionality to it as a brush for my refined brush. And then the other thing I like to play with a little bit is transfer. And I just play up the opacity jitter. And that's going to make it slightly higher and lower opacity as I'm using it, which will help will help with my mixing. Okay, now how do we mix? This is still in my refined paint layer. So I'm going to take some strong colors, like this one, paint it, there we go, and then take a color like this. How can I blend between these? What I do is I paint with a lower opacity, so around 70%. And then when I do that, the, the pixels underneath show through, even underneath with the base color. Then I can steal that color and then paint with that, and then it shows through. And then I steal that, and so on, and so on, until it's perfectly blended, right? All of these are in-between steps, always done at 70% opacity. So I keep getting more and more kind of average colors between the two. And then I can steal from that color and I can get all the variations just between these two colors. Now if I throw in something really different, like this color, you can see how that mixing is working and I throw that in at just 70%, look at the, the different variations there already. Now if I want to refine even more, I take it to a lower opacity and maybe a smaller brush, and then you have a lot of control right, about your color and the different variations it might have. So that's in principle what we're doing with our refined paint layer. I'm just using it at a higher opacity to start with to cover it all up, or at least as much as I can within the time I have. So let's continue. So I'm using another tip, which is to turn on my navigator. 
so that I can see the, the whole image as I'm working on it. I want to work on the bridge of the nose a little bit. And really kind of model it. Modeling means to kind of give it dimension. Figure out what your sides are, what your light source is, how light and dark you want it to go. A lot of repetitive strokes. And then how can you kind of smooth those together? My crazy base colors are showing through underneath, but this refined paint layer, that's where I have more nuanced kind of subtlety to all the, the mixing. Now, mine's looking very much like kind of a Van Gogh painting in terms of heavy brush strokes right now. I like to start it that way because it's a lot easier for a computer to soften than it is for it to sharpen things accurately. But if I wanted to smooth it out, how can I do that? So I'll make a duplicate of my refined paint layer to show you. So what I would do, instead of just like we did for duotone soft edge color, instead of going to blur and Gaussian blurring all of it, which will do it, that will smooth it out, right? But it does it kind of all over in a way you can't really control. I'll undo that. Instead, I'm going to use a tool version of that. And this tool is called the smudge tool. You'll find it underneath the gradient. And the smudge tool is pretty great. It's like a brush. You can use it with even with your brush. And you can define all those brush dynamics. But it doesn't actually put any pixels down. Instead, it's going to mess with <laughs> uh, the, the pixels you have in that layer. So I'm going to make it smaller, not that small. All right, so now I'm going to show you on this copy, because I don't actually like using the, the smudge tool that much. But now when I use it, look what it does. It mixes those pixels together and softens them. difference between this and this in that little area that I worked on. That's the smudge tool. And if you use it enough, it will be kind of airbrush smooth. It's kind of like if you use watercolor and you have a fairly dry brush, make a pretty clean mark, and then you just load it with water and add that to the painting, that water is going to dissolve the edges of the paint and soften it. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, there are some brush presets that are just based on, on this kind of mixing, right? There are even mixer brushes and all kinds of things you can do. So you can see I can s blend between by using this smudge brush in very much the same way as just stealing colors. I tend to use it right at the end, just on certain areas. But what I do like about it is you can kind of push your color into new sections because it is just like pushing your pixels around with your fingertip, which is why it looks the way it does in the tool window, like a fingertip pushing paint around. Actually, this is pretty fun. And I think because I'm using it with my custom brush head, it's not as kind of generic as it usually is when I use it just with a round brush. Yeah, I might go back to that, but I'm going to keep 
with my refined painting as is. But I wanted to show you the smudge tool. And I gotta continue working on this nose. Some warm whites in there. I have to pretend that her glasses aren't aren't there for now, and I'll add them in later. And because digital painting just takes a lot of time to refine and work on. This is one that we're getting introduced to, but we might not finish to our satisfaction by next class when it's due. And you can still get, you know, three out of three points on it as long as you've demonstrated the different layers of base color, refined color, and trying for some of these these mixing techniques either with smudge or just with color selections it's really good for you to work with your own custom brush just so you can really understand how brush settings work yes but like I'll say on Monday, because I'm not going to be working on this over the weekend, you know. You're, you're going to get done what you can. And as long as it kind of demonstrates, like even if I turn this in now, it would demonstrate the things I'm looking for you to know about digital painting. Because there's not much more to know. It just takes a lot of time to get it to a level of finish you're happy with. And then some students do want to invest that time for a portfolio piece to print, you know, because they like how it's turning out. But my goal is to get you to, to understand it well enough that you can use it for your final conceptual project if you want. And it's a really great finishing technique just to go on top of other techniques as well. So you've heard of like photo retouching, you know, that kind of thing. In digital, that's basically just digitally painting on top of it. Yep. So this just gives you very direct control, you know. Happy Thanksgiving. Have a great holiday. Yep, and this will be my last video for today.